My name is Luca Pfeiffer, and over the last four years, I have explored Albemarle County, looking for the best places to film and photograph wildlife, to learn more about my local environment and share its beauty with the world. On my way to class last semester, I spotted this goldfinch fledgling in its first few hours outside of the nest. Although I was a little worried for this baby bird's safety, its mom was keeping a watchful eye in the trees above. Part skate park, war memorial, and bird sanctuary, McIntyre Park is one of my favorite nearby locations to visit. And it looks like there's quite a few goldfinches here as well. The Canada Warbler is one of the rarest species you can find in Albemarle County. Like the Eastern Wood Peewee, this bird is a long-distance migrant who travels all the way from South America to Canada every year, so you can only catch a glimpse of this bird if you go out during fall migration and have a little bit of luck.
Another migratory traveler is the elusive American Redstart. The only other time I've seen this bird in Charlottesville was actually on university grounds during the pandemic, as the reduced foot traffic made it more likely to see rare warblers in an urban environment. The folks at McIntyre Park have also built a number of birdhouses throughout the fields and forests, providing an ideal nesting habitat for bluebirds. But it looks like the bluebirds living on grounds have adapted to their urban environment and have began nesting in the light pools above the Snyder tennis courts. If you stand still photographing wildlife out in the field for long enough, you might catch the attention of some curious nearby residents. The northern mockingbird is one of the most common species you can find in the area, and was actually Thomas Jefferson's favorite bird. He even purchased one from an enslaved person and held the mockingbird in a cage in Monticello. Although not originally native to Albemarle, the urban sprawl and deforestation spurred by the creation of UVA made the county an ideal habitat for these birds to move in and become year-round residents.
In August, around 100 birders gathered at Ivy Creek Natural Area to view the migration of common nighthawks. These birds can only be seen from August to September and are most easily identified by their unique diving behavior and wing shape. The Ivy Nature Creek folks do birding week every second Saturday of the month and it was my first month in the country. They spotted me a indigo bunting and the week after I came here by myself and I had to cycle here all the way. And the moment I realized that they respond to your calls, I just kept playing for a while, and they'll keep singing. It's just amazing. My name is Joshua Praveen Yaramoto. I'm a research scientist here at the School of Medicine in University of Virginia. I moved here in 2018. Before that, I was in Australia for about uh, eight to 10 years. Before that, I was in India, where I was born and raised. There was this one time when I was preparing for an exam with my friend in a backyard, and then I saw this beautiful bird, the Indian paradise bird. It was just amazing. And ever since that day, I started looking for different birds of interest that sort of resembled that bird. Then when I moved to Australia, a local photographer took me out into the field and he was a birder, and then he showed me some things around. And then I started going out into the field more frequently by myself. And then I saw this bird, Golden Whistler. It's just a fantastic bird, and that was the very first photo that I took as a bird photographer. Shenandoah National Park is the best. Go there a few times of the year. I did see a great horned owl in Shenandoah. Owls are also my favorite species. I've been searching for good spots to find owls. That was like a eureka moment for me because uh, I found it accidentally without an effort. I had a bunch of people around me and I was jumping like anything and they had no idea why I was doing it and I was like, there's an owl. And they was like, uh, yeah, it's just an owl. But for me, I know what it meant. Technology has definitely brought people close to nature, I would say. You have more accessibility in terms of looking at wildlife closer to you, but I don't let technology limit my interaction with nature. That's because uh, anybody could enjoy nature just by itself, even without a camera. I kind of worry about what kind of negative impact it's going to create into the interactions that we have with the wildlife in general. Uh, me being a bird photographer, I worry about birds being affected. For example, a lot of people have controversial views about playing bird calls in a phone or uh, from a recorded device out in the field to lure the birds close to you or to identify them. But we actually don't know how they sort of affect their behavior, especially during breeding times. After I became a birder and a photographer, if I see something related to nature, I just stop. You start to appreciate these little things when you truly know what you're looking at. It sort of amazed me like, how could I not appreciate this beauty before I was a bird watcher? Yes. Go out into the open for us, please. From August to October, you can also find these weird looking insects at Ivy Creek known as beech blight aphids. While you're hiking, look for any dark spots on the ground, and above it, there will probably be a group of these funky creatures. The busy streets of Charlottesville are also home to a variety of insect species.
European starlings are some of the most commonly found birds in the United States and are actually an invasive species introduced by a group of Shakespeare enthusiasts who wanted every bird mentioned in a Shakespeare play to live in the U.S. In the skies above rugby field, I witnessed something I had never seen before, and still haven't seen since. The low air pressure caused by the rain forced this group of hundreds of swallows to fly lower than usual, creating an acrobatic display of these birds dashing through the rainy skies and catching insects. As the fall brings cooler weather, you'll also start to notice the squirrels bury and dig up their acorns. Looks like this squirrel's got a big one. If you're looking for the best spots to admire Virginia's fall foliage, you can't get much better than Shenandoah National Park. When animals start grooming or preening in front of you, it's generally a pretty good sign that they feel comfortable and unthreatened by your presence. Witnessing this special moment between a mother deer and her child was certainly a wildlife experience I will never forget. As fall ends and winter draws closer, 
you can start seeing huge flocks of birds fly through the evening sky. The largest flocks are comprised mostly of robins and starlings, but many other species can be seen as well, making each sunset a guessing game where you piece together calls and silhouettes to identify each flock. The winter of 2023 was by far the warmest and shortest of my four years in Charlottesville, with it only snowing for a few hours in March. This slight snowfall didn't do much to dissuade busy foragers like the humble song sparrow. In the cold weather, these birds appear much larger in an adorable attempt to preserve body heat. The same could be said for the robins, who look extra chunky this time of year. As most trees have entirely lost their leaves, winter is prime time for a little bit of arboreal maintenance. Although it is sad to see the habitat and food sources of many birds get destroyed right in front of you, the tall Charlottesville trees combined with storms can pose a safety risk to us humans. However, we aren't the only ones cutting down trees in Albemarle. Following their dam building instincts, the beavers living at Ivy Creek are busy gnawing away at tree stumps to provide food and shelter for their families. Looks like the great blue herons at Ivy Creek have also started to prepare for the coming spring. Here you can see a male heron perform one of his mating displays where he stretches and shows off the length of his neck. Red-headed woodpeckers can also be found in the area during their wintering and breeding seasons. Unfortunately, the number of these beautiful birds is on the decline as humans have continued to cut down the trees that they live in and invasive European starlings have successfully outcompeted them for shelter. Similar to McIntyre Park, Ivy Creek also builds a number of owl boxes to attract nearby residents such as this eastern screech owl. The reason I go out and shoot wildlife is it just really brings me joy. 
My job is pretty stressful. Being out here in nature, it keeps me grounded. Hi, I'm Christine Eagleson. I'm an endocrinologist here at UVA. Came here to Schultzville back in 96 for residency and have pretty much stayed here since then. I had a back injury and then couldn't run anymore. I started walking around Ivy Creek and always enjoyed photography and then one day decided to bring the camera with me to see what I could get. And after taking a couple pictures of some birds, it quickly became my passion. For the most time, I'm at least going out by myself, but if I see people on the trail, you know me, I'll probably talk to them. <laughs> if I had to pick a favorite bird local to Charlottesville, I would have to say it's the great blue heron. We're really lucky here in Charlottesville. Ivy Creek Natural Area actually has a heron rookery. Multiple nests are there and it's just fascinating to watch them you know, raise their young. Ivy Creek Natural Area also has some barred owls and I've been lucky enough to see them in the woods and even see the owlets the day they fledged, climb up a tree and then watch the parent come over to the owl and feed the owlet. Those moments were really, really amazing. Having a camera on hand really enhances how I view nature. You know, no matter what kind of day you've had, no matter what's happened, you can look up the sky and be grateful for the color of the sky or the clouds, you know, the trees, the shadows, how different animals are interacting with each other. So it's just been a great thing. Some days I go out and I don't get any pictures and I just have a nice walk and that's totally fine. Other days I come home with a thousand pictures, which is probably too many. And then I guess one of the biggest joys about nature photography and being out here is just meeting different people. Like I've met young people like yourself. I have other friends who are older and retired. I've been able to show families, look, there's an owl in that tree that they wouldn't have otherwise seen. Or did you know there's a rookery over here? And it's fun being able to share that joy with so many other people. I originally met Christine for the first time when I went to Ivy Creek in January of 2021. And after following her on Instagram, I saw her post about a heron rookery off the side of the Orange Trail. Eager to see it for myself, I decided to get up for sunrise on the first day of spring and bring my video equipment with me. Part of the Great Blue Heron's mating ritual involves the male finding nearby sticks to bring to the female to help build a nest.
Osprey also migrate through Albemarle in the springtime. Also known as Seahawks, they are some of the most talented when it comes to swooping down and catching fish. After filming my interview with Josh, we decided to head to the spot where Christine saw the family of barred owls the year before. After spending some time hiking through the area, Josh and I saw a large silhouette flying through the trees and just knew we had to follow it. We ended up finding both the male and the larger female. And although we didn't plan it at all, we also ran into a familiar wildlife photographer. According to Christine, right before we got there, she witnessed the female swoop down and kill a squirrel. You can actually hear the squirrel's partner mimic a bird predator alarm call in order to foil the owl's hunting plans and hopefully get it to move away from the area. Since I started photographing and filming wildlife, I gained a newfound appreciation for the world around me and greater empathy towards the non-human members of our community. Each walk through the busy streets of Charlottesville or remote reserves like Ivy Creek presents a new opportunity to learn more about the species soaring in the skies above me or hiding in the grass beneath my feet. Once you're able to start identifying different animals or insects, they stop being the faceless, generic creatures they once were. As you start to understand their unique backstories and personalities. Whenever I revisit a familiar location, I'm always amazed about all the new secrets that are still left to be discovered, and how much each area changes throughout the year. Getting into photography and videography also provides a constant source of motivation to keep going back into the field, as you can spend hours photographing the same subject as it darts around the forest and gives you countless compositions to choose from. Although high-end camera equipment can be quite expensive, most nature reserves are free to enter, and every year, phone cameras become increasingly viable at capturing high-quality images especially for subjects that are easy to get close to, like plants or insects. Whether you're casually birdwatching or deep in the muck with a telephoto lens that costs just as much as your car, nature can provide you an endless source of entertainment. And by spending time out in the field, you'll become aware of how your local environment changes over the years giving you the first-hand knowledge to help contribute to conservation measures and community science efforts.
even if you're not going to wake up hours before sunrise and drive deep into the wilderness for those rare early morning bird calls, I hope this video inspires you to pay a little more attention to your non-human neighbors, as there is so much out there for you to explore.